Hi yogis, I'm Nicole from Nicole Star Studios. So today we're going to be practicing our first body love, body work uh, class. We're going to focus on myofascial release. And so before we get started, I just wanted to kind of go over like what that is and what we need just for a few moments. We're not going to dive as deeply into it as we would in one of the courses or programs, but I do want to just kind of touch base, base real quick. So as uh, most of us know, we're aware of our, our muscular system. So myofascial is um, muscular fascial system um, where we have these muscles throughout our bodies. And then we also have this connective tissue, connective tissue being ligaments, tendons, fascia, things like that. And we have fascia that runs uh, around the muscles, through the muscles, acts as this nice, um, this nice casing. It is a joining component. It is a separating component. It is also where um, adhesions tend to happen. Um, you can also think of it as a communication highway because there are actually a lot more neurons in the fascial system than there are in the muscles. So um, a really good way to look at it is to look at this little child's toy. And you can imagine these sticks are our bones. The bones, there's uh, the bones don't touch on to bone. They are wrapped in this um, fascial casing and then connected through tendons, ligaments, and things like that. And so you can imagine these um, rubber bands would be like our fascial system the, or the fascial system as well as the tendons and ligaments. So the interesting part about all of this is that the research into the fascial system is new in the last few years, whereas um, before they really dismissed um, fascia and connective tissue, um, didn't really think much of it. And now they're realizing, wow, this is a really impactful, um, strong, important system. And it also acts as a whole. Meaning, imagine that your body is wrapped in this incredibly durable latex full body suit. So just like you would here, whatever you do to one part of that body suit can affect the whole rest of the system. So by targeting the fascia in this way, we actually... Um, can release other parts of our body because they communicate to one another, they communicate to the brain and things like that. So again, just understanding this is the tensegrity system, that what you do to one compartment um, affects the system as a whole. And the idea behind the role of fascia, which we use with foam rollers, or in this case, we do it with um, myofascial release balls or tennis balls. Um, the idea here is to you're placing a controlled contraction on the fascia. So for instance, say um, we have a part of our shoulder, right? That is just, uh, it's feeling really, it's feeling really tight. It is in contraction or it's feeling sore. And you can target the shoulder, but if the shoulder is in a place where it's spasming, you don't necessarily want to place more pressure on top of more pressure. You could target the other shoulder or the parts of the, fa the fascial chain, which we'll get into another time. But you can take a tennis ball or we'll go over these, um, these different types of balls here in a minute. And you can place it within that myofascial chain and you compress the fascia as well as the, the muscle underneath the fascia. And so in that compression, again, doing it in a controlled way and holding that, finding that sweet spot and then holding it, that is actually sending a signal to the brain that's telling the brain, hey, there is a, an overstimulation here. There is a contraction here. What do you think the brain is going to tell that part of the body to do? it's gonna tell that part of the body to relax, to release. So by applying pressure in this way, we're encouraging the body to release, to heal. So again, this is really good for our nervous system as well as um, 
the list of all the benefits of myofascial release. So again, we will dive a lot deeper to that into that in a program. But for now, I just wanted to kind of cover like what this really means. And again, I mentioned that you can use tennis balls. Um, tennis balls, for the most part, some of them are a little squishier than others. General rule of thumb, if it's a little softer, it'll be a little less intense. And also just a side note, the research shows that the more intensity you do in the with these um, techniques doesn't necessarily mean the better. It really doesn't make any difference whether you're feeling an intense sensation or a relaxed sensation, the benefit will be the same. And I know so often, especially in our yoga practice, we want to get that juicy stretch. We want to get that juicy feeling. And so this is a really good place to practice kind of stepping back a little bit and then being a little more curious and a little more open and also a little more gentle. So you want to get to the place where you're at like a seven out of 10 in as far as intensity goes. So anyway, you can use tennis balls. Um, if you don't have any balls at home, then you can also take some rice, tie it up in a, uh, in a sock, and that will definitely be a, the the soft, softest uh, option for us. And you can use that in these different positions. There are also these myofascial release balls. This one is rubbery, kind of like a rubber mat, whereas it would have a little bit of a sticky component to it, not like sticky like syrup, but as in I wouldn't slide. So I could put this on my naked body and it wouldn't, you get more of like a, a shearing motion um, if that's what you were body is craving. Um, there are also foam balls that would be a little bit softer. You can get um, ones that are different sizes. So the larger balls are like a foam roller. The larger it is, the more space it will cover. So if you're short on time, you would be able to cover more space. But if you have the time and you want to get more into the nitty gritty details, then that's when you would use like the smaller balls or even like something like this that has all these different corners. So this would be good for like the face, jaw, things like that. So there are a lot of different options. Um, so today we're simply going to be curious and explore and kind of see how you might notice immediate, immediate relief in the body. All right, so let's go ahead and come to a centering. If you are going to play music, go ahead and play whatever you'd like, or you can um, follow along with me. I'm gonna be playing Yen in my Spotify account, Yen with the letter, capital letter B in parentheses. And we're gonna scooch that to the side. Coming to a seated position, or if you would like to lie on your mat, by all means, feel free to do so. Palms up or down, knees or thighs. Whenever you're ready, you can close your eyes. If your eyes are not ready to close, simply soften your gaze. Taking that breath in, cleansing sigh. Allowing the cleansing sigh, the organic breath to invite you into this present moment. Allowing our intention for our practice today to simply be curious. Curious in exploring our body, surrendering judgments, expectations, an awareness that allows us to connect with our vessel, our vehicle, our beautifully unique body.
Let's acknowledge our intention or set your own with an own. Inhaling. Uh, Allowing the ohms to anchor us into the here, into the now. Begin to gently do a body scan. Maybe starting at your feet, moving up the leg. And continue up your body, just noticing, noting, feeling, sensing. Being open and curious to your experience. When you are ready, inhale the arms up overhead, palms touch. Exhaling hands to heart center. Allowing my words to become your words as we open our practice, connecting with these tissues. I am a vessel for divine light seeking the best and ultimate healing. Prayer hands to mind's eye, that space between the eyebrows. Thank you for this divine healing light. Guide me well. Prayer hands back the heart, releasing the palms down. When you are ready, you can open your eyes. Bringing your legs out front if they're not already there. You can stay up on blankets or you can scooch off of them. Bring your hands beside you and we're just gonna warm up those legs by windshield wiping them side by side again and simply notice the external rotation, the internal rotation. Maybe like me, you had leg day yesterday and the legs are talking to you. <laughs> and we're gonna extend the legs out front, allow the feet to be about hip width apart. Now with your feet about hip width apart, if you're feeling a lot of pressure in the lower back, you can take a blanket sitting up on one or two blankets, whatever helps relieve some of that pressure in the lower back. If you're feeling some pressure behind your knees, you could take a blanket, roll it up and place it, um, or on your knees, you could take that blanket, place it under your knees. And from here, on the exhale, fold forward, and I'm gonna let you decide, do you wanna take this in more of a yang and active pose by firing up those legs, pressing through the four corners of your feet, Flexing those feet so the toes are drawing more to the ceiling, a nice active Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. Or do you want to go more of a yin version where you round the back more, you surrender into the pose? So when you practice this, eyes either opened, softened, or closed. Focus on your experience as it is in this moment. 
doing the best that we can not to judge how far forward we're going. Just an awareness. This is going to, is going to be our starting point. This is going to be the pose that we come back to. So maybe when we're practicing this myofascial release, we notice a difference almost immediately in our range of motion, in sensation. When we practice myofascial release and then come back to a pose like this, it's helpful in Sometimes we can go a little deeper into the pose. Sometimes we have a bigger range of motion. Sometimes we simply have more of a sensation because the body has awakened because we've taken the time to practice that myofascial release. That's why the myofascial release is set, it complements our yoga practice and, and vice versa so well. And go ahead and come back up out of it. You can stay on this blanket or you can scooch off and I just want to make sure you guys can see my legs. I'm going to scooch these blocks out of the way. And then grab one of your tennis balls or myofascial release balls. And you can use um, a block or not. The block isn't going to, again, a block, just like in our yoga practice, doesn't mean a lesser than myofascial release, just like it doesn't mean a lesser than pose. Sometimes it might intensify it a little bit more. Um, what it does is just simply bring the floor closer to you. That is all it does in any practice. We're going to target our calf muscles. So first, again, you can have the myofascial release ball on top of the block or on the ground and put it right into the middle. So imagine you you have your calf muscle that runs right here in the back of your um, lower leg, and you're gonna find the midpoint between the, um, your, the heel and the knee, and then the midpoint between both sides. And again, that's where you're gonna put the ball. And you can lean back. And you can rock it side by side. Maybe you wanna scooch it down a little bit. Just find that sweet spot. Again, find the number seven where you are feeling sensation, not going to the point where it is unbearable. Remember, stronger doesn't mean better, okay? And then for a moment, I just want us to explore here. So if you were to flex through your foot, if you were to fire up your calf muscle, do you guys see how you don't feel that the sensation as much. That's because the muscle is activated. The muscle is in a state of stability, protection. This is a good thing. This is tension in the body. Understanding that tension is not always a bad thing. Tension is what allows the body to adapt, protect, stabilize. So now, I would like you to relax that foot. So find that sweet spot and then try your best to relax into it. After you've moved through a few times, pause and breathe. This is where the compression is coming in. So we're compressing that calf muscle. There is a signal being sent to the brain saying there is a compression here. This needs to relax. Staying with it, breathing through it. Now move to the inside so you can turn your leg slightly in. Um, you don't have to, you can simply move the ball in a little bit more. Ooh, there is my sweet spot. Oop, that was a little too far. Maybe rocking up and down, side by side. Find it, pause, breathe. So this is how we'll continue to do the, this myofascial release. You create some movement, finding the sweet spot, and then surrender. Similar to what we do in our yin yoga practice where we take the first minute, making the adjustments, and then settle into stillness. Myofascial release targets our fascial system just like our yin yoga practice targets the fascial system. 
And now we're gonna move to the outside of that calf. So again, you can roll it, you can move the ball, finding the sweet spot, creating that rocking motion, that shearing of the, um, the fascia as well as the muscles. Finding the sweet spot and then settle in. Breathe into it. All right, coming back to center, releasing out of that side. We're gonna go to the other. So maybe on this side you wanna use a block, maybe not. So starting at that bullseye, that square, creating that shearing motion. And then settling in. Very natural to feel this more on one side than the other. So as I mentioned earlier, the great part about this system working as a whole, say you have a spasm on your left calf muscle, um, or say you have a muscle in contraction where it is not releasing, um, or you have a strain or a sprain you know, on your left leg. The research has shown that if you practice something like this on the right side, it inadvertently helps to relieve the left side. Also, you can be relieving your calf muscle and all of a sudden you're like, what happened back here in my shoulder? It just all of a sudden released again, remembering that tensegrity system that it works as a whole. Let's go ahead and move to the inside. Again, create, finding that sweet spot, creating the shearing motion. Kind of like you're scribbling on a sheet of paper and then settle into stillness. And be curious and open to your experience. How is this side compared to the other? How is the sensation? Let's go ahead and move to the outside. <laughs> Just like I say in every class, discomfort is natural. A sharp pain is not. A sharp pain is not going to help us here. A little discomfort might. Go ahead and release out of it. Scooch your props out of the way. This is the great part. Now we're going to go back into your forward fold, your Paschimottanasana. Notice. Do you notice an immediate difference? Do you notice that you could pretend that you are potentially going a little deeper? Your range of motion has already increased. Maybe you simply notice more sensation in the calf muscles. Maybe they're talking to you like, hey, thank you for that. We are alive and awake and free and ready to move and adapting. That's what this myofascial release does. It creates a controlled stress on these specific parts of our body where the body is asked to adapt. Coming back up, grabbing your um, myofascial release ball or your tennis ball again. And from here, you can uh, actually, if you have two, you can grab two or we could, um, when I go halfway through it, then you could do both sides. And from here, I want you to imagine where your, your sitting bones are. So you have your sitting bones and you want the sitting bones to remain on the ground 
or on your blanket, but you want them to be rooted and grounded. And then about an inch down from that, you're going to place these myofascial release balls on each side. So they are, imagine this is your sitting bone. Okay, so you have two sits, two sits bones. And I want this myofascial release ball right in front of that sitting bone. So the ball, it's like the ball is resting right in front of that, those sitting bones. You can keep your knees bent. You can straighten out your legs. For less intensity, you would lean back. For more intensity, you would lean forward. I would not recommend going into the forward fold here. Um, and you can also like lift your hips up and rock side by side. So when you do this and you rock side by side, whether your knees are bent or I said it'd be, you have to kind of bring your heels down. Um, you can feel the hamstrings. Okay. So often uh, we might not realize that hamstring, it's a group of muscles, hamstrings, like guitar strings back there. And so the myofascial release balls are basically strum, essentially strumming the string, the string. You can continue the shearing motion. And then once you settle in, again, always feel free to adjust. And just be with it. Be with this sensation. You can also wiggle your feet side by side. Bring them apart and together. Again, the name of the game here is really simply to create an introspection, which is allowing us to turn inward, allowing us to connect with our body, creating that informing, cultivating that line of communication where the body feels comfortable and safe and you've created that pathway where the body's like, oh, thank you for opening this door. Now I can communicate with you when I have a message to share, <laughs> which is a wonderful thing. Not always an easy or comfortable thing, though. Okay. Now, I want you to move down about, uh, so a third of the way. So imagine, so this is your leg, about a third of the way down, I want you to place those balls again. Knees bent, legs straight. Again, you can lift your hips up and rock forward and back, side by side. You can wiggle your feet side by side. If you want a little more, you can take those blocks. Placing the balls underneath the blocks. So after you find that sweet spot, like kind of settle in a little bit. Ooh, that's a little too much for me today. Again, deciding if you want to lean apart. Maybe you want to sit forward. Again, I would not recommend folding forward in this one because you do not want to create a stretch while your that muscle is contracting here. I know there's um, like uh, isometric uh, contractions um, where we lengthen while we're contracting the muscle, but that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to create pressure. We're trying to create some, um, some tension in the system in a controlled way to allow that to be signal our brain to release and relax, which is different than when we are stretching and contracting it, then we're lengthening that muscle. But here we are trying to get the signal to go to the brain saying, hey, we want this part of the body to relax, not necessarily lengthen, we want it to relax. So after that, so then you have like one third, another third. So move those balls down. And again, here, rocking side by side, maybe moving your hips up. And that's when, um, this is a good one where you can really feel like the hamstrings. And then after you've settled in, find stillness. And you might notice by releasing the hamstrings, it has done so much to relieve pressure in the knees. My knees were bothering me the other day because I did a lot of sitting 
um, because last week I was uh, working, as you noticed, on the website a lot. So I did a lot of sitting. And because of that, my knees were just bothering me. So practice some of this myofascial release. And I was good after a couple days. All right, let's go ahead and remove that. You ready? Go into your forward fold again. Do you notice the difference? Again, maybe you've gone into a deeper range of motion and maybe it's not necessarily about the range of motion, but maybe your, your hamstrings are now able to communicate with you. Maybe you're feeling a stronger sensation there. That's that introspection where you're becoming aware and connected with your body. Okay, let's go ahead and come on up. We're going to practice one more before we end our class. These always go by so quickly. So have both of your balls released down. So in that constructive rest. Which again, this constructive rest pose helps to neutralize the psoas. So by neutralizing the psoas, we help to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and restore, rest and digest system. So I want you to lift your hips up, take those myofascial release balls and place them by your sacrum. So just on um, some uh, uh, marine, your sacrum is this upside down triangle here at the base of your spine. So you can start with the balls here, just on the edges of the sacrum. And then we're going to kind of roll around and find like a spot that works for you today. You can go side by side, moving up and down, just finding that sweet spot that works for you today. You can keep your knees bent. You can straighten out your legs. Straightening out your legs in this one definitely intensifies it. Bring your palms on you, beside you, whatever feels right. Um, a side note, with the myofascial release balls, you want it on the muscular fascial system, not on bone. It wouldn't feel so great. So here, just really settle in. And this is probably one of my favorite to practice because you have the constructive rest that is uh, so relaxing for our nervous system. And then with the myofascial release, again, understanding that the connective tissue is like this communication highway. And there are all these neurons in our connective tissue. So by massaging the connective tissue, the fascial system, this is also encouraging that hydration, that relaxation. So this is a great pose to practice if you're just feeling so overstimulated to just simply come into this. And for me, it's almost an immediate, immediate, See, that's how good it's working. My tongue and my words are like, la, la, la. <laughs> it's an immediate relief and release and just relaxes the whole system. You get that nice little yoga high. So if you are moving, find stillness. Five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and pick those hips up. Scooch the balls out of the way. Bring your palms down beside you. Lift your hips up in the air, practicing bridge pose. Create a little bit of contraction to bring the system together. 
Picking your heels up, releasing down one vertebra at a time like you're placing down a strand of pearls. Release the heels down. Heel toe your feet so they're about mat width apart again, and we're going to do those windshield wipers. And again, just notice. Maybe when you're windshield wiping your legs side by side now, compare that without judgment, but compare it to the, what um, how it was at the very beginning of class. It might feel quite different. Returning the soles of the feet onto the mat. If there is another pose you would like to practice to round out your class, by all means, feel free to do so. When you are ready, draw your knees into chest, nose to knees, squeeze them into a ball, giving yourself that well-deserved hug, squeeze everything really, really, really tight, take a deep breath in. Release, relax, letting everything go. Palms up or down beside you or on your body. Maybe an eye pillow on your eyes. Allowing your feet to fall away from one another. Relaxing ankles, lower legs, knees, upper legs, hips. Surrendering legs top to bottom, bottom to top, abdomen, chest, back and spine. Surrendering the torso top to bottom, bottom to top, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, palms of the hands. Relaxing arms and hands top to bottom, bottom to top, neck, jaw, Allowing the tongue to fall from the roof of the mouth. Inner ears, outer ears, cheeks, eyes, eyebrows, space between the eyebrows, the mind's eye, forehead, top of the head, scalp, back of the head, inside the head, relaxing brain stem, downstairs brain, upstairs brain, right side brain, left side brain, sensing the brain whole integrated. Surrender brain inside the head, face outside the head, whole body with a deep audible sigh. Welcome to Shavasana.
meeting the world. You must meet the outer world with your inner world or existence will crush you. There is a wind that keeps blowing since the beginning of time. And in every language ever spoken, it continues to whisper, you must meet the outer world with your inner world or existence will crush you. If inner does not meet outer, our lives will collapse and vanish. Though we often think that hiding our inwardness will somehow protect or save us, it is quite the opposite. The heart is very much like a miraculous balloon. Its lightness comes from staying full. Meeting the days with our heart prevents collapse. This is why 90-year-old widows remain committed, tending to small flowers in spring. Why 10-year-olds with very little to eat care for stray kittens, holding them to their skinny chests. Why painters going blind paint more. Why composers going deaf write great symphonies. This is why when we think we can't possibly try again, we let out a sigh that goes back through the centuries. And then, despite all our experience, we inhale and try again. Reaching your arms overhead, legs straight, stretch long through those fingers and toes, maybe making circles with your wrists and your ankles, possibly a deep yawn. Keeping right arm overhead, left arm over chest, rolling onto the right, pausing in the fetal position. Pressing off with your left hand, come to a seated position. Sitting tall, mudra of choice. Eyes closed as we breathe in. And out. Placing that smile on your face. Letting that smile radiate from your heart. Inhaling our arms down, around, and up, gathering the energy of our practice today. Exhaling hands to heart center. Pause. Breathe. Be. And bowing head to heart in silent gratitude. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for joining me in our practice today. I really hope you enjoyed our body love, body work class. I would definitely love to offer more of these. So if you did enjoy it, please let me know. Um, also remember that these classes are still contribution-based. I believe there are a few more left. And then we'll be moving to the um, membership plans. Um, yeah, I just hope you have a wonderful day, yogis. Till next time, stay in the light. Thank you.